My name is Ramson and welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. In the last episode, we freed a lot of her bow. Um, did a bunch of the different missions that were remaining in the big swamp, checked basically every alternative side quest that we had access to at the period of time. And now we are left with, largely, the requirement to go sleep. Operator! And then the rest of that event and so on and so forth. Alright, Murray's Antiques. No messages for us. Charles has nothing to say. Fair point. Jessica looks pretty busy. Alright. We set Flemberg's tiny workbench up on our desk. Time to get some tiny work. Wait. Ah, I see. Gideon just went back to the bird bath. I saw some flapping in the corner of the screen and then the sploosh. I wanted to confirm what had happened. You're swamped with exhaustion, so of course it's a good time to get some sleep. And begin our nightmare routine. Oh, that's not us. A disconcerting dream. Safe and warm. Today's date? October 20th, 1902. My diary. Read today's entry. This diary is property of Margaret. Age nine. All others got to keep out under penalty of law. Dear diary, yesterday our dog Daisy died. Papa said it was bound to happen because she was older than me, which isn't old for a kid, but is really old for a dog. He said we'll get a new dog soon, but I was sad anyway. Some birthday. At school today, the teacher asked what we want to become when we grow up. I said, I'll be God, because then I can make sure that all the dogs live a long time and are always happy. Everyone laughed, and that jerk Billy Gribsley said a girl can't be God. So I said, I'll be president instead, because that's nearly as good. He said a girl can't be president either. Well, I show him. I'm going to make all kinds of laws about being nice to dogs, and I'll make being a jerk illegal too, so Billy Gripsby goes to jail and can't eat nothing but bread and water forever. So there. Your desk, covered in Ocean City paperwork. And Poindexter, your insufferable bean counter. See what he wants this time. What is it, Terrence? Madam Controller, I merely require your signature on these budget revisions. With this, the remainder of the funds currently allocated to the municipal services will be redirected to your shadow presidential campaign and your other projects. That sounds a bit... obvious. Rest assured, I am only sparing you the details, which you have made quite clear to me you will find intolerably boring. The transactions will be meticulously obscured through shell corporations, cutouts, offshore accounts, and the like. All good. You'd better not be skimming more off the top than I'm willing to ignore. But certainly not, Madam Comptroller. I signed the documents. It's time to record the announcement of your candidacy for Shadow President. One of your PR lackeys, carefully trained to be just unafraid of you enough to tell you what not to say in public. <clears throat> Attention peons! Aw oh, jeez, don't call them peons, ma'am! And uh, please try for a less totalitarian tone generally? Uh, right. So uh, something like, what's cooking my pals? No, what? Wow, no, way too casual. No one's gonna buy that. I hated saying it anyway. How about, my fellow citizens, good evening, I, Margaret That's weird. The levels went all funny when you said your last name. Don't worry about it. Hereby announce my candidacy for Shadow President. Vote for me, or else. Uh, no, sorry ma'am. No. Ugh. Start out by explaining who you are. Most of them don't pay too much attention to local politics. Alright. In my role as Ocean City's Comptroller, I have made it my mission to... Eliminate waste and graft in the financial, uh, sorry, in the city's finances. Make sure you all get exactly what you deserve, or rob you suckers blind for my own nefarious ends.
Rob, you suck as blind. Ma'am, are you funnin' with me? It feels good to tell the truth every once in a while. Won't get you elected, though. I suppose not. In my role as Ocean City's Comptroller, I have made it my mission to... Make sure you all get exactly what you deserve. Um... What? Well, look, I get it, double talk's fun, but it makes you sound kinda sinister. You'd be better off just lying. That's fair. In my role as Ocean City's Comptroller, I have made it my mission to eliminate waste and graft in the financial services of the city. And I am proud to say that I have been completely successful through my program of shutting down needlessly wasteful civic programs, thereby reserving your valuable taxpayer meat for the things that actually matter, ensuring none of you have the time or energy to protest my actions, or forcing you to live in desperate squalor like the rats you are. I mean, I want to test the rest of them. Forcing you to live in desperate squalor like the rats you are. Okay? Feel better now? Yeah, it was good to let that out. Swell, let's get the real one now. Right. Thereby ensuring none of you have the time or energy to protest my actions. They, uh, probably don't want to hear that, ma'am. I suppose not. Also, that's more of a convenient side effect to your policies rather than their basic purpose. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, thereby reserving your valuable taxpayer meat for the things that actually matter. Things like... Ultimate power. Now let's see you mean for everyone. <laughs> yeah, no. No way. <laughs> okay, well, things like... Mom, baseball, and apple pie. That's pretty good, but it isn't a cliche yet. But if it isn't a cliche, rather, it will be soon. Okay, well, how about things like... Family, prosperity, and freedom. Perfectly meaningless. Love it. Then, just a call to action to top it all off and we're done! A vote for me... is a vote for you. Or a vote for me, and I'll pay you a hundred meat. Or vote for me, or I'll destroy you. Ah! Ma'am, come on! <laughs> Sorry. A vote for me is a vote for you. Oh! That's great, just perfect! Good, is that all? Yeah, we'll add all the legal, this message, blah blah blah, campaign for Shadow President stuff and post. Great, I'm out of here. Ugh, time travel makes my guts itch. This guy has a yokel, even by the standards of his time. Time to grease the wheels. Mayor Burby, I presume? Oh, yes, who are you? I'm here to speak to you about the Crystal Dream Valley Dam project. I want you to make the dam bigger, much bigger, and much more powerful. Here are some revi revised plans. A, a dam this large would flood the valley and displace hundreds of people. And uh, besides, the dam plan will provide perfectly adequate amount of power. Why would we need to make it bigger? How about a handshake agreement? What? I don't even know who you are. You want me to agree to this on the basis of a handshake? Eh, specifically, I'm offering you the chance to shake hands with the handle of this large briefcase filled with me. Oh, uh, hmm, uh, well, now, uh, yes, yes, uh, actually, I think this uh, new plan is quite viable. Good. Hmm. We can see some of the eldritch symbols we've seen slightly before hanging there in the background, uh, very clearly in what is meant to be a replication of an Oval Office kind of situation, a, a, a desk of extreme power. This desk was carved from a single block of tedium, the raw elemental form of boring work. There's a sheep in your office. What the hell? Turns out, a lot of the president's time is spent on ceremonial bullcrap that nobody actually cares about. Case in point, pardoning the Thanksgiving turkey. None of your aides know what a turkey looks like, apparently? Bah. I pardon the damn thing anyway. Your desk. Covered in policy documents both benevolent and malign. There's a note here about going back in time and making the Crystal Dream Dam bigger. Gotta get on that eventually. Your ridiculous court wizard isn't taking the situation seriously. I make it clear to her what is required. Give me a progress report on the SIT thing. Have you taken care of the problem yet? 
Oh, so dreary and unfestive there. All that math and science. It isn't holly or jolly. Screw your damn theme. Your entire job is to deal with magical issues. I won't have that do-gooding interloper messing around in the library. There's too much at stake. Get it dealt with, or I'm giving Crimbo's federal holiday status to the friggin' groundhog. <gasps> you wouldn't. Go, get out of my office. Six lockers. <laughs> I searched the seventh one. Some dumb jock kid you have to give a presidential fitness award to. I get it over with. Uh, hey kid, how's it going? Um, hi. Brilliant. All right. By the power invested in me as the Shadow President, here's a reward for being able to climb a rope faster than most other kids, which is definitely important to great use of my time. Um, thanks. Do I have to give a speech? Whatever. I'm out of here. This miserable beast in the swamp. I deal with him. President Strong, make rich! Yeah, I know, and yes, you don't have to remind me of the terms about two-word agreement. You're keeping your people mean and hungry? Yes, warriors mean, warriors hungry, good fighters. That's right. You're my ace in the hole. This stinking muddle. If I need to use force, so... You'd better stay on top of things if you want your make rich. Keep everyone worshipping at the Gator Shrine too, but for God's sake, don't mess with the stuff in the basement. If you screw up anything down there, I'll turn you into wallets. Get me? Oh, I get. Good. <gasps> wow, we've gotten seriously futurified. Judy calls again. This useless oaf. More damn paperwork. How come nobody told me President is all paperwork and talking to idiots? Uh, sorry ma'am, but the unwashed mass has got to be kept in line while we amass power. Yeah, yeah. I hereby sign this order declaring July 12th National Bread and Circuses Day. <laughs> all citizens get a complimentary dinner roll and a free turn on the nearest suitable trapeze. Uh, ma'am, I ain't sure that- Who cares? Let Coolidge deal with it. What's he even for anyway? This is all beneath me. I storm out. Hellstrom. What does he want? Find out. All right, Hellstrom. Let's hear your report. Everything fine and dandy, man. I don't exactly understand what this shadow energy stuff is exactly, or... Uh, why you want so goddamn much of it, but the converters are spraying out slicker than greased mice out of a Gitlinger. With plenty of slag left over to press into those weird monsters you like. Finally, some good news! So you'll meet the project deadline? Yes. Though we'll need to expand the oil drilling operations some more. Need you to sign this permit so we can expand into lots 210 to 240. Ah, sure, whatever. Wait, sorry, 210 to 240? Lit the problem. My family's farm is 223. Oh. Well, ma'am, if you're wanting your weird black juice, we've got to get regular black juice out of the ground first. <sighs> All right, fine. Sorry, Grandpa. I sign it. Wow. Still has some conscience here at the very end of all things. Enough of this. I step through. Madam President. Time for us to grab a couple of the buffs that uh, lie in this room. It's our little tentacle buddy. I tickle him. Crafting desk. I mean, we've got some stuff there. I'm just going to quickly rub the crystal. Consider the orb as well. Thank you very much. Sit. Grab one. No, already got one of them. That's fine. Pretend to fight this for the fairy fisticuffs, and then I believe we are well and- Whoa, hang on. Sitting in it for a while. Inherent stink. A bit more stench armor. Ah, I really want one of these eventually to give me a, a, a statistical bonus. We've got a sickle from a signal- <sighs> Wait. We've got a signal from a sickle. You know, the farming tool thing. It's over in Grant County somewhere. Mostly nothing but farms there, but there's a store since, you know, forever. 
The owner's name is Jasper. He knows Murray. He'll help you out. You got an item, the Gray County placemat map and Jasper's feeding tech. This is a diner placemat. It literally has a map of the country right in the middle of it. Oh, I'm just impressed you found a way to give me an actual map that it's while also still giving me a thing that isn't a map. But also, this is a severe upgrade from cheese. Well, not cheese, sorry, it was a sponge. Just looked like cheese. You check the message pad next to the phone, there's a note for you. Call Don T with the phone number, I call the mob back. You call the number. Uh, hey, this is Betty One Tongue speaking. What happened to Don Tolero? Sore throat, you Ryan? Yeah, that's me. Okay, here's the deal. We left a bunch of your stuff in the edit stand. And there's some books we need cooked, some documents we need forged, and some evidence we need doctored. Once you're done with all that, dump it in the sewer grate outside the antique store. The boys will handle it from there. Got it. Nice talking with you, Benny. And I mean that. Sure thing. I hang up. I'm gonna head back to our nightstand and pick all that up. Open the drawer and see. We find uncooked mob books, unforged mob documents, and undoctored mob evidence. Pages and pages of raw financial data. These documents are printed out on soft, unrefined paper. And it's bleeding ink! It needs medical attention immediately! I know a doctor. And... I, I wonder if I can get all of this done at the hobo camp. Uncooked? Yeah, I can get things cooked there. Forged? Eh, not so much. That might be a wee bit difficult. Hey, Charles. Never mind, Charles. Evidently, the uncursing machine wasn't built to make this store this many curses. You know what? Oh, just press uncurse. Remove your geese? Sure. Hey, Jessica, does this thing remove, get rid of... <sighs> so, there, were, there, was, there, were, there were a couple of comments in the last time that I you know, struggled to realize what this word was or meant. Uh, of like, hey, that's part of my favorite anime. Anyhow. Last night, I saw it used for the first time in Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, I still don't really know too much about the word or what it means, though. Hey, Jessica, does this thing get rid of geeses? The plural of goose is just geese. Also, why do you have geese? No, geese. Like a curse, kind of. Oh, well, sure, probably. I do it. Ugh. Inside the contraption you feel a whoosh and a pop and a little pain, not unlike having your ears pierced, and indeed there is a spurt of pus that follows the procedure, although not from where you think. The geese is gone. Yes, good stuff. That was my negative one to all of my things. Close your eyes and open your mind to the machine where you want to go. Let's go to the keys curse. I want to see what's going on in here. Yeah. Yeah. This one. I remember this. I'm gonna leave. What about the fishing rod one? Could this be the one? So, there were three here before. And I'd slain... Oh, this is the cycle! Ah, oh, this is the cycle. Break it. There were three here before, and I'd slain three when the fish mother was like, obviously, I'm not going to be friends with you. You've killed my kids. Uh, so I wanted to see if, having killed a couple more fishmen at this point, this would be more populated. But there's now a bicycle here. I break it. Oh. When the curse got its teeth in that bicycle, it screamed. But only for a moment, and then silence. Limp. Silence. The insatiable eldritch hunger for fish that once animated the curse is gone. The fishing rod remains behind. Just a stick and a hook. Too weak to catch anything that lives. Can't even fish with it now. The accursed fishing rod? Stripped of all eldritch magic and mystery, the once cursed fishing rod is now perfectly banal. Actually, it looks pretty lousy, which doesn't matter much, because the line was dismissed along with the curse. Uh, another curse kick to the curb! Okay, so that would lead me to believe that there is a way to resolve this that I have not done. 
All right. Tell me again what you know of this case. 11.13 a.m. Yume Ryo Kenshi. Poisoned her husband with an odorless substance. Derived from the rubber trees of uh, Almodovar. Provided to her by Mr. Andretti. As you've deduced, the professor had effectively blacklisted the sorry youth Martin with a card on grade and Ms. Ryo Kenshi. Sought to avenge her son. Ego, they all conspired to murder the professor and void the debilitating brand of car dunce. I have solved this murder. Yeah, I... Where do you get that? The victim was... Okay, right, so... I... I guess I'm talking about a different murder than this? I'm gonna... Uh, smashed by a giant dog with big feet uh, out of sick curiosity. You were given great power and you use it, don't you remember? Don't you remember the ring? You're being foolish now. I must take my leave. Don't you remember? Don't you remember the ring? Okay. Here... Mm. Maybe, if I put that ring on, I will have an additional detective detective mode? Tell me again what you know of this case. Car dance, okay, fair enough. Embroidered morning rags and wipes. I admit, Detective, I poisoned my husband, but spare me the reproach, wouldn't you do as I did if the scoundrel of Ivory Tower branded your son a car dunce? I confess, Detective. I supplied the poison that killed the professor, but wasn't it worth it? Look at the resume of Martin Perry. Look at these interesting ideas he has about tires. Bouncier. Globular. Backwards. Is the life of one man worth more than bringing new and innovative wheels to the world? Yes, I did it. I did it so I could hire Mr. Perry and I would do it again. And don't lie, detective, you would too. You really are as good as the papers say, detective, to sniff out that my C and D grades stood for car dunce. Yes, I put the whole plot in motion. Of course I did. Getting wheeled, uh, sorry, getting called a car dunce ruined any shot. I had a career in wheels. But a man's entitled to make a living, wouldn't you agree? That was the only way. I have stole this murder. The victim was blown up by me with dynamite out of revenge. Here we go. You're a fool, a fool! I gave your pals a great deduction and observation. I gave you the power to bend back the skin of the world and sniff up its insides. How dare you waste it? You really want to live without this power? You really want to live in the dark? Uh, the curse lives in the ring. Yep. Take the power from me. You're a fool and I wouldn't sell that ring on a finger of a fool. Give it back now. I don't des you don't deserve it. I uncurse you. Boom. We did it. So, did that curse effectively try to bribe you into not destroying it? That's a little disconcerting. You look at the key that once harbored its shadowy magic. It shimmers in the light. Upgrade! Uncurse key plus 50% item drops. Putting that terrible key on a chain has rendered it decorative. You check your fingers and pockets. No mysterious owl ring. You're reminded of the great figures of history who wielded incredible power and chose to give it up. You can't think of anyone specifically, but the concept's interesting to consider. I get 25 experience. Who's someone famous who gave up great power? Um, he's not famous, but my dad never eats more than he needs at a buffet. I don't remember where I read this, but there's a rumor that Anne Boleyn never ha oh, had access to a tank but chose not to use it. No need, she said. You know who else had the tank? Walt Whitman. Interesting. <gasps> Excellent. It's no longer overflowing. I use Rufus's gadget and get one more mark. 
Excellent, excellent. I don't happen to have another radio in here, do we? Get some calls. We're obviously on a date, that's a okay. Fabian and Jeffers clink glasses in celebration from their respective rescues from Gatorman Lairs, uh, Lairs, rather. Our friend! Our friend! Come on, let me buy you a drink! Um, I drink for free here. Not this, you don't. They slide out a large crate from under the table and deposit it at your feet. A crate of milk. Take that to Fancy Dan. It says the milk isn't pasteurized, but the bottles are, if that helps. Oh! I can't get my mind off of milk lately. Thanks! I can't wait to drink all of it. I wanted to tell you, you've done more than rescue us. You gave Fabienne and I an opportunity to meet. Look at us, an artist and a writer. We have already made plans to collaborate. Nice! I love picture books. Or I'm too old for picture books. <laughs> I, lo I love the presuppositions just carrying both of those. I'm too old for picture books. No, we are building a blump. Yeah, that's right. We've decided to build a blimp together. Why? As the artist, my friend, he does not ask why. He asks, why not? Okay, why not? Exactly. And that's what we said, too. Now, if you'll excuse us, we've got much to do. Never seen a blimp that built itself. Another round, fancy done. And some more blueprint pepper. Ah, uh, okay. Good luck, guys. Hi, Dan. Right back at you, baby. What's new? Here's your cut of the profits, baby. I found this crate of milk. Milk, huh? Well, what's good for the camp is good for the cocktail. I'm gonna order a drink. Is this the start of a new day? Let's get some muscle and moxie. Some whiskey. Plus one max AP, obviously, from the cola. Seems like a good mix there. We're getting an olive in that as well. Whiskey and cola with an olive. Fancy cocktail. Do you want to take Obi back out into the field? I want to take a lot of the companions out into different locations as well, actually. Now, I did see some new times. So, like, 1902, for instance. Oh, okay, nothing under 1902. I was wondering if I would see anything related to any of the past visits we made in our dream. Evidently not. Well, lacking that, let's quickly check if I know the uh, visible means of opening this monstrous vault door. What's it made out of? What's it made out of? Is it made out of bronze? Do I need some bronze removing juice? <sighs> no clue. Now, at a new day, of course, it's time to go buy ourselves some new pants. Bloomers! When these die, they'll be late bloomers. Thick woolen plants. These pants will keep you safe and warm. As if you were riding two sheep, one with each leg. Or cold armor for that. I'm gonna have a chat. So why a pants star in particular? Oh, my mother was arrested a couple of times back in the 1850s and 60s wearing pants in public. Oh, since then, our family's been big advocates for women's pants and equity in uh, clothing generally. Wow, that's a deeper answer than I was expecting. How's it working out for you? Oh, much better nowadays. We don't have 100% pants acceptance yet, but we're getting there. I did notice you had some skirts for sale too. Yeah, I've been experimenting with a line of men's skirts. That's proving to be a tougher sell. Men are much more stubborn about their clothes, I guess. Hmm. Texas Instruments. Do you have anything new for us? The antique jaw harp. And the detuned guitar. With the, uh, before the invention of good instruments, people had to make do with weird pieces of metal. Deals your moxie plus six in physical damage and the detuned guitar. You don't know how to tune a guitar, so you've decided you're just gonna tell people you're keeping this one out of tune on purpose. Ah, I see. Drop D. Uh, deals five physical damage to all enemies. Interesting. That said, I feel like 
if it's not modified by Moxie at all, it's very difficult to justify. Okay, let's check out the Cold War Surplus store as well today. Oh, the Blue Officer's Sidearm. This is a standard issue Cold War's pistol. They're hard to find these days due to them all being made of cheap plastic. A Cold War's medal as well, an accessory gains 5 extra EXP from fights. Cold War's officers got more done before 9am than most people do in a single day. But their life expectancy was dramatically reduced because of all the compulsory amphetamine use. Sometimes I like not the read, not reading ahead because it gives the game a little opportunity to do stuff like that to me. Well done. Alright, uh, I'm gonna see what we've got for new hats. So, stop! I can tell from your creeping smirk you're about to ask me about lost hats once again. Ain't I a stinker? Albert leans over the counter. Well, you've come to the right place. I don't know who gave you my name. Maybe I think it's best I don't know. And yes, it's true, I do a dirty side business in cheap loused hats. For those customers who just want the look and don't mind the bites. Obviously this has to stay hush hush. I'll cut you in on the profits. How's 40% just to keep your mouth shut? I just wanted a loused hat. Huh? Huh. You're part of this now, you can't wear your own supply. First rule of the illegal lice trade. 60. Fine! You gain two meat. That's it? Yeah, and that's all with their rounding up. It's not a huge market for loused hats. There's not? No, much people prefer not to have lice in their hats. Huh. I guess that makes sense. Okay, bye! Fire bucket hat, two physical armor and four hot armor. It is significantly more effective than a welding mask. This is a bucket hat made from an old fire bucket. Firefighter's helmet plus four hot armor. This helmet will protect your head from both flames and falling roof beams, which are the two principal occupational hazards for firefighters. And then the fuzzy bubsy. Wearing this is the equivalent of having an extra foot of height and an extra 10 pounds of hair. Hello, yay old Chemica. Apologies. Need to clear my throat. This must be the shop's proprietor. Judging by her lack of eyebrows, I introduce myself. Hi, I'm Ryan. Is this your shop? Well, certainly it is. My name's Janice, Janice Chemiker. Did you just move in? Didn't you just move in, rather? Why is it all blown up in here? Well, we say it's real chemistry if you don't blow everything up if... It isn't real chemistry if you don't blow everything up and catch your hair on fire a couple of times, so I like to get it out of the way early. What have you got in sale? Okay, the Acoustic Nostrum. With a name like Nostrum, you'd think this would enhance your sense of smell, but in fact it enhances your hearing. Increases the damage of ranged weapon attacks by three. Actinic resonance fluid. This liquid vibrates at the resonant frequency of meat. There's a boxing solution. This stuff is guaranteed to make you feel like Nell Saunders, or Billy Misk, or Polly Fairclough, or Barney Williams, or any other name of really good boxers that you've definitely heard of. Contact Mike? Uh, this is a solution of copper dissolved in mild acid. It might not seem safe to drink. That's because it isn't. Conductive Displit is also a hyperreactive compound. This is a blend of chemicals that can react to anything. Kind of like a tabloid generalist, am I right? Hyperreactive Compound, the miscellaneous chemicals which we've seen before, and Plasmatic Serum. This is a synthetic fluid that mimics only the parts of blood that are thinner than water. Let's make some small talk with Janice. How's a new store? It's okay so far. In an ideal world, I'd have some crayons or colored pencils for you to play with. Huh? I'm not a child. Adults like to draw too. Some of my favorite adults. Uh, artists are adults. Could your customers use this? A pencil. Oh yeah! She takes the pencil and pays you for it. You gain six meat. I know it might seem silly to you, but I have such fond memories of going down to the chemical store as a child. 
I'd sit and draw pictures for hours. Can I draw something with a pencil? Mm, but you're my pencil supplier. Wouldn't that be a conflict of interest? Could your customers use these as styptic pencil? Oh, definitely. But you shouldn't be buying anything or here if you can't stop the bleed. Oh, you mean to draw pictures with? No, I don't think those will work for that. So you don't have anything new for sale, unfortunately, as a result of us having had a conversation. Alas, doesn't look like the Kamika is particularly good. <laughs> Dang. Oh boy! We've got the whole Grey County that we actually need to make our way over to as well. But, for the moment. My name is Jim Ratchet, the name of the game. It's been Shadows of Loathing, top left of the series playlist. Down below, YouTube recommendation for what it thinks you should watch next. Next episode, we're going to make our way to the Grey County and try and discover the scythe. Hopefully, you all have been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully, we'll see you all next time.